In 2018, we embarked on the journey of a lifetime, living and traveling full-time in our self-converted van. We're going to go for it. Join us as we continue to explore the beauty around us, one adventure at a time. Today we are in Oregon, in between Lakeview and Bend, off of State Route 31. And this is Duncan Reservoir, owned and operated by the BLM. It is public land, it is free camping. Stay tuned to the end of the video, and we'll give you more information on that. So what are we doing here? Well, we needed a place that has internet, and we just wanted some place peaceful and quiet away from all the town commotion. And I think this is fitting the bill. So we need the internet because we're still in the planning stages of getting ready to go into Alaska. So every once in a while we need to put stuff together for that. And this seems like a great place to get some work done. Now Oregon brings back a lot of memories for me and we haven't been here in at least a couple of years now. Uh, I, as a child, I lived in several different places, including New Pine Creek, Lakeview, Burns, Corvallis, and I think a couple more. I can't even remember. I was pretty young. So it brings back a lot of good memories. And it's just good to be back in the state. And that's Duncan Reservoir right there. And Rudel's got his own little path down to the water. Uh, I think he's pretty happy about the location. There is a storm in the forecast just a couple days out. I'm almost afraid to say anything about it because every time I do, it dissipates and disappears, goes over us, and nothing happens to show on the video. But it is, right now it's forecasted, lightning, thunder, heavy rain. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. I've always loved storms. I look forward to them. And this is, looks like a great place to hold down and watch one roll through. Right below the dam here is a group camp spot area that looks like any size vehicle could fit in and easily turn around, except for maybe if you're 40 feet and you're hauling a car, then you may have to, well, you could still do it, but you have to have some skills. I can smell the sagebrush in the air. It smells great, I love the smell. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good little setup. A couple of picnic tables, fire ring, a little bit of water coming out of the dam. And we're a little early in the year. That's probably why there's nobody camping here right now. I would imagine if you come during peak season, you would not want to show up on the weekend or this would all be full. But it's great that they offer a group spot and it's pretty down here, right on the river. Well, I call it a river, it's uh, more like a creek, at best probably. And they've got a little ladder to go over the fence, but it looks like, oh, the fence is down. Yeah, that's truly not much water, but it is still a flow. 
and there's big juniper trees here. This is just giant. Especially when you're coming right out of the southwest where most of the juniper are fairly small. There's some big guys here. Yeah, you'd really have to filter this water to drink it. The cows have been running through it. it doesn't have much current. It looks like Riddle's gonna try it out though. That's what I like about Riddle. Not too picky. You're not too picky, are you, Riddle? Although I haven't seen him take a drink of it yet. Oh, there's a little tiny bit of current. Any less water in this lake and then, um, yeah, I don't think there'd be any water coming out. Noticing that there's all kinds of flowers right here. They're super tiny yellows and pinks and white. Oh, they're pretty once you get down and get a close look of them, but I met a guy that calls these belly flowers. And I was like, well, that's an odd name. And he goes, yeah, you, you have to get down on your belly to see them. Uh, that's definitely these guys. But they're pretty, they're delicate, and they're in bloom right now. All right, I think Riddle's ready to head back to camp. He's already telling me to go back. He probably wants to play ball. Back to camp we go. Yeah, so they got a gate right here. And you can tell by the loop. There's a little loop right here. And then the fence post is over here on this side. And then you just put it across and you put the top of that right into that loop. And then the bottom next to the fence and instant fence. But they probably have it down for the cattle to get through so they can get some water. All right, Rudel, let's head back to camp. Good boy.
right, Rudel. Let's keep going. Anytime I'm at a campground, I like just to take a walk around and explore the area to see if there's any roads that we can explore with the van or I can just walk them if they're too rough. And that is the case on this one. It's way too rough to get the van out here. But if you have a high clearance four wheel drive vehicle, there is a lot of exploring to do. These back roads just go for miles and miles and it makes a fun walking area for me. Coming up on a gate here and I know that the campground is BLM and the land around it is BLM. So I'm thinking that this is a BLM gate, which means it's the public can open and close it as they need to, to get through. And then when I take a closer look at the sign, Bureau of Land Management right here at the bottom. So yes, it is. And the giveaway is that yellow sign that says, uh, please close gate. I know when I see those that it's, it, it's probably a BLM gate. So we're just gonna open it up. Rudel knows his gates and cattle guards for sure. Go through and close it. And that's all that's required. But once again, it's important to know what kind of land you're on. You don't wanna be opening gates that go into private land. Might be a rancher out here that just wouldn't appreciate it. A beautiful day today. Wait, Riddle. Wait. Yeah, wait. Good boy. He slowed down for me. Good job. And there's nobody in the campground right now, so I don't need him on a leash. And he doesn't like to go very far away anyway. It always amazes me how warm and welcome that sun is. It doesn't matter the temperature. It could be four degrees. Go outside, stand in that sun. As long as it's not windy, it feels so good. And look at this morning light. What a beautiful morning. It's kind of ironic. I tell people we sold our house and we quit our jobs, and got rid of everything we, we knew, moved into the van and went full time. And what's the first thing we do? Is we set up a routine. <laughs> and today is Saturday, which makes me think about this. And used to be that Saturday was, you know, the first day of your weekend. And uh, our videos come out on Saturday. So Saturday, technically, is still the first day of my weekend. So I work hard all week. Saturday is my fun day. Some thunder showers are forecasted, or thunderstorms. But right now, the temperature is perfect. And it's still getting just cold enough at night that we're not getting any mosquitoes. But I could bet money, come here in about one more month, this is gonna be a mosquito lake. So we're gonna walk around the lake, see if we can make it to the other side, where we, we think there's some water coming in. If nothing else, it's a great day to get out. Beautiful scenery and just enjoy the day. Is this natural or man-made? This is natural and it appears to be a lava tube that collapsed. The top's all gone, but you can see all the lava rock on the side. So that's pretty cool. Look how narrow wait. and straight it is. Wait, wait, 
Wait. Wait. There's concrete right there. Well, they took advantage of it. And they probably <laughs> dammed it up at one time. But yeah, that's natural. Other than the concrete right there. Yeah, they didn't dig this out. This was natural. They put in this and they controlled the water flow, but... <laughs> that's neat. Have you ever heard of the app Merlin Bird ID? It's really cool. That bird you hear, it says it's a western meadowlark. What I like about it is you can take a sound recording and it'll tell you what the bird is. So far we have a killdeer, a mallard duck, Canadian geese, and the western meadowlark. Come on, take it nice and slow. I must say, it's not super easy walking. There's a lot of big rocks, lava rocks. You gotta really watch where you're placing your feet. You can see all the little flowers are just starting to bloom. In fact, everything is just starting to come up. I bet you two weeks ago, there's still snow here. I love shoulder seasons. Early, early spring, late, late fall. Before the heat of the summer, before all the bugs come out, before the crowds come out. It looks like at one time that there was a lot of water flow in it. This took out all these aspen trees. Mm. And I can hear rapids in the distance, so I want to go up a little bit further and see if we can see any running wa water. Yeah, running water movement. Hi, Beetle. Hi. Did you find the spot? I did, and we had a transition between juniper trees and ponderosa pine, and there's a lot more water coming in than I thought was coming wow. in. Wow. Look at the creek down there. That's where I wanna go. I wanna go down there too. I don't think it's very accessible. If I was fishing, that's where I'd be. Yep. It's starting to rain, Dave. I know, I think we went a little too far, but we got into the Ponderosa Pine, see the river coming in. This is the kind of terrain where you can't really hurry or you're gonna fall and hurt yourself, so. I'm resigning myself to getting wet. Unless it blows over, it could blow over. I do have a sweater. But it smells really good, I will say that. And you know how I love clouds. Clouds are amazing. You can see the van from here. I just told Dave, I'm like, look, it's past us. And uh, it's raining harder than it's rained the whole time. That but smells great it, though. It does smell good. And it's 56 degrees outside, so it's not cold. The smell is incredible, though. The birds like it.
The good news is the storm passed us. <laughs> the bad news is there's thunder and Riddle does not like it, do you? <laughs> do you, buddy? You don't like it, I know. I know. So I stopped to do a time lapse of the clouds, but uh, Rudel is not having any of it. He says we need to keep moving. So I'll insert the shortest time lapse ever right here. Do you hear thunder? Yeah? Okay. All right, buddy, you got your way. We're going. Come on. Let's go. Brutal was 100% right. As soon as we got back to the van, a massive thunder cell moved into the area, bringing incredible amounts of thunder and lightning that lasted clear into the evening. This is one of those times where you had to be in the right place at the right time and just happened to be recording video. You know those lightning shots you see where there's 20 bolts of lightning and you think there is no way that that is real. Well, let me tell you, I slowed down this video frame by frame and it is real. This is the lightning bolt and the thunder that scared us all so much. It was incredible. Incredible. Holy smoke! I've never seen lightning that bright. <laughs> oh my gosh! Rudel does not like thunder, and that last thunder was probably one of the loudest I have ever heard. So we got him in a little cocoon down here. Mama made him a little fort. Yeah, he's got his blanket and his pillow in his little fort. This water runoff is from the storm yesterday. Isn't that incredible? This is the reservoir overflow. And two days ago, it was completely dry. This water is running in here and down into the creek below. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, my favorite thing about this area is just how remote and quiet it is. There was hardly any people around and the lake, the reservoir itself is just bringing in a lot of different wildlife. So mm -hmm. we get to sit here and observe. Yeah, we've been sitting here with our binoculars watching, we think, five eagles. Yeah. So one of them was humongous, two juveniles, and then a smaller one that looks mature. Yeah. Uh, a million ducks, some Canadian geese. Um, antelope antelope or pronghorn yeah. or whatever you'd like to call them this morning 
So that I think my favorite thing is the wildlife and of course the storm that real yeah that that, that store was cool. I just about wrote it off thinking we were gonna miss out and then we got hit <laughs> and we got to watch the lake come up. I'll, you know about 40 feet of shoreline is now gone so it's nice to see the lake recovered. Yeah we're dragging our feet leaving today because we're watching the lake in the last hour it's come up I don't know four inches. Yeah it's still and coming up. Overnight it came up I don't know 10 feet. It's it's at least 40 feet from when we were here before. Yeah. So it's just incredible to see what one day of rain can do in this area. We are dragging our feet leaving, but it's shower day, as you can tell yeah. by the we need camp to go. hair, don't <laughs> care. <laughs> All right, let's get straight <laughs> into what you need to know if you want to come here and enjoy this campsite yourself. First off, as far as rig size, I'm going to go 50 foot total length. And the only reason I'm given that limitation is there's a couple juniper trees that are hanging out in the road in the campground that could be tough to get by if you're any longer. Uh, there's two pull-through sites uh, and a total of eight sites and a group site that's large right beneath the dam um, that any size rig can get in there as long as you can make the turn. You might have to come into the boat ramp, turn around, and then go into it. Um, as far as amenities... We're looking. Would, you, would you say most of the sites are like what 30 feet yeah I'd most say, of them are small most of them are small but there's two like i said two pull throughs yeah and there's fire rings and picnic tables yeah and one biffy biffy <laughs> since we're heading into canada we've been talking to some canadian friends and they were saying there's an outhouse or a biffy so i'm calling <laughs> it biffy there's one pit toilet here yeah. and it's fairly clean and stocked so there is a boat ramp and depending on the water level you may be able to launch a shallow drafting boat but definitely great for kayaks and canoes and anything that doesn't draw too much water because it, it would be pretty easy to hit a rock if the water is low here and the one thing about oregon is any any water device over 12 feet you have to have a special tag yeah. so um, even my paddle board i would need that tag to be able to take it out on the water okay so you'll want to think about that when you're here so there's no water there's no trash no electricity no dump it's pack it in pack it out um, great cell connection yeah it's the perfect spot to come if you have t-mobile verizon just need a spot to do some work, get some work done, and not be bothered by outside distractions as far as noise goes. Yeah, we did a lot of, I did a lot of behind the scenes work this week on the computer. We did some stuff for Dave. We did a Zoom meeting. We did a podcast. We did a coordinates PDF for Patreons. I was a busy girl. Yeah. Edited a video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this was a get some work done kind of location. Yes. At the same time, it was very enjoyable. Absolutely. The nearest town? Is... Nearest town is Silver Lake. It's about 10 miles away. Um, currently, uh, we are five miles off the pavement. So State Route 31, we're five miles off of it on a gravel road. The gravel road is in good shape. It does have a little bit of washboard, but it's very minimal. And it's the road seems to recover after a rain in about one day, and, and it's drivable. So I thought that was pretty cool. We pretty thought cool. we were going to have to hang out all day today, but it seems like it's recovered very well. Yeah, we didn't want to leave ruts on the way out or get stuck, but just one day and it's dry enough that yes. we can, it's hard packed now. Um, gas station in Silver Lake? Silver Lake gas station and RV park. It's a super small town. If you're getting major supplies, man, we are far from the Bend. I think Bend yeah. is 63 miles away. Is this, I thought that was Lapine. I thought Ben was like 85 miles oh, away. Maybe. But you're at least 60, 70, 80 miles away from getting major supplies. Yeah. Here. So we are heading to the RV park today in Silver Lake and we're hoping that they are open because we are in dire need of water. We are down to one gallon of water. We uh, are in dire need of a shower. And get laundry. We have and to, get laundry done. <laughs> we pretty much need food. So <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to get all that done in Silver Lake because it's a super small town, but we'll get most of we'll it done. We'll get most of it done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will say we are here early in the shoulder season. It is mid-April. The nights are still below freezing. In fact, the mountain just across the way we noticed yesterday, there's fresh snow on it. So we're really close to the snow line, which means that there are no mosquitoes yet. Yeah, no bugs. Um, come uh, May, June, July, August, I'm guessing this is going to be uh, Bug Haven and Mosquito Lake. 
It could be. It, it's, <laughs> it's possible. Um, I would imagine this gets a lot more people here during the summer because the fishing is noted to be very good. They stock it and that's going to draw a lot of locals in. It, this location is on I Overlander, so you can expect people to come in just to stay one night and leave. Mm -hmm. If possible, I would try to get here dur it, during the summer anyway. I would try to get here during the, the work week when there's going to be less people. You don't have to worry about that if you come in early spring like us. <laughs> and we have noticed the locals have been coming every day and fishing and catching lots of yeah. rainbow trout. Yep. So. And that would be why the eagles are staying around, I would imagine. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, did we miss anything? Uh, it's it's dog friendly. There's no foxtails or weeds that uh, Rudel doesn't like. There's no cactus. So uh, Rudel is really happy about this location. And I will say there is lots and lots and lots of evidence that they free range cattle in this area. Uh, it looks like they come right down into the campground and to the lake shores. So uh, don't see, be surprised if you wake up one morning and have some cow neighbors. Yeah, they do have it fenced off pretty much all the way around the lake. But if the lake is low, they can get right by those fences. Mm -hmm. Or if they have the fences open like right now. I think we pretty much covered it. Uh, you know, when we arrived here, I was like, mm, this is okay. It's not, you know, nothing spectacular. But it really grew on me the longer it, we stayed. Same here. Right? Yeah. The longer we stayed, the better it got. Now it, <laughs> it's hard to leave. Yeah. So give it a chance. Stay around a few days and keep your binoculars in your hand. Maybe go out on a on a kayak or canoe or boat or something. But, uh, man, I really like it here. This is what we call high desert. This is kind of what we grew up in. We love junipers. And when you first get here... Um, it takes a while for it to grow on you yeah. and but when it does when you take the time to look for the beauty it's pretty spectacular. it's, it's amazing it's yeah. amazing all right off to shower land yep all right we appreciate you watching our video we hope you give it a thumbs up and we hope you get a chance to come here and visit this location for yourself if you would like to support our channel please consider becoming a patron thank you for watching